the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the God, Amen. Good morning, everyone. You awake? Half, half. We want to share something small from the Gospel today and encourage each other. You know, the part I love the most here, of course, we know the Gospel is about feeding the multitudes, five loaves of bread and two fish. Our Lord and the disciples fed many people. But before that, we can learn a lesson about mission. Like, there's, there's something we can learn here at Mission Church. I'm coming from a mission area. There's something we can learn as a church and as a group today. The word of our Lord, we can see clearly says, He received them and spoke to them about what? The kingdom of God. He received them and spoke to them. Now this happened before what? Feeding of the multitudes. Okay? He received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. Afterwards, after he spoke to them, he healed them. After that, he gave them food to eat. You know, sometimes we always wonder what is the purpose of our church? And you're a new church and growing church and a mission church. That question, I'm sure, crossed your mind many times. And it crossed our mind in Zambia many, many, many times. What are we supposed to be doing? What's the point? But today I feel like there's something very clear about the way our Lord did His mission. And I want us to learn from it and talk about it and see how we can grow and learn from His, his model. First of all, it says, He received them. Now, sometimes we say verses in the Bible very quickly. He received them and spoke to them. And, but he received them means a little bit more time. What does it mean he received them? It means he welcomed them. means he loved them. means he was kind to them. means he was opening his arms to them. It means he loved them. Right? He received them. Okay, if you receive somebody to your house, they knock on the door, you open the door, and you say, come on in, sit down. You close the door in their face. He received them. He built relationships with them. And to be honest with you, this is our church focus, is to receive people into our church. Now for me, it's hard, because if some of you who really know me, I'm not really a people person, I don't like to talk too much to people, but in Zambia, I have to put on a smile. I have to ask God to give me the grace to, to, to welcome and to receive, and like if I start to talk to people, I get tired quickly. But we have to do that. We have to receive people. If we can't receive people and welcome people and love people, then what are we doing as a church? You know, we have to be friendly. And I think the thing, sometimes, and this is not to your, I don't know your church, I'm just talking about like our church and Zen. Sometimes we are not friendly to people. We don't receive people. The first thing our Lord is, is received. You know, sometimes our folks, we come in, stand in my same seat every week. I sit there, stand there, and say the words, take communion, and I go home. And this is our church in Zambia, so I, we try to stop them and say, no, you, you need to be friendly to each other. You need to receive, like that's what our Lord did. He received people. <clears throat> on the way here to, to America from Zambia, I was on the plane, and like Daya took side, Mary Grace were three, and I was one with uh, another person next to me. I wasn't, they threw me out and they put me. So I was next to another guy, and the other guy was very friendly to me on the plane. He was friendly, he was talking to me, he was open to me. And the way he was friendly, I discovered later he was like an evangelist. He was trying to preach to me. He thought maybe I was a Muslim or something, I don't know. <laughs> so he was, he was preaching, but he, but honestly, because he was friendly and he received me, I opened up to him. I started talking to him. He started talking to me. And I was like, this guy's good. And then later I discovered, oh, he's a man. He was praying for that chance to speak to me. It was just good. I liked that. And I think that's a lesson. We can look, some people look are gifted in receiving people and welcoming people and smiling and, and being friendly. And some people like me are not. I'm not, but we have to work harder at that. And I feel like our Lord today showed us how to receive. He, like, look at the verse. He received them and spoke to them. 
about the kingdom of God. This is long before he fed them. Okay, just remember, I'll talk about that in a second. Long before he fed them. Sometimes it's not comfortable to talk to people. It's not comfortable. Like, I don't know if you're like me, I'm not comfortable talking to people. I'm not comfortable talking to you right now. I'm not comfortable afterwards when you come to me, you're going to see me a little bit. I'm not comfortable. You know, and I think that that's okay. It's okay not to be comfortable, but it's not okay not to be friendly. We have to be friendly. We have to be welcome. We have to look at each other and invite each other. And not only us, I'm not just saying in the church here, but I'm saying even where we are, at work, or our neighbors, or whatever. We have to be, we have to receive people. We have to make a connection with people. Another funny story was how we were just in Florida visiting Guy and his brother. And we decided to die's brother would babysit our kids and we would go to the, we would go out to eat. We died, we haven't done that in a long time. So we we go out, we went out. And during the time <coughs> we got the dessert. Dessert was very nice. And all of a sudden the lady next to us was staring at us and looking at our dessert. And she was like, Do you like it? Like like what? Do you like the dessert? Said, yeah, we love it. <laughs> she started telling us the history about this dessert. Okay, and for me, I was a little bit uncomfortable. Why are you talking about my dessert? I'm leaving it with you. And then, but you know what happened next? From one thing to another, she started talking to us. And at the end, I discovered once again, she was preaching to us and sharing with us and trying to share. She even recommended a spiritual book to us. At the end, it was very friendly. So we'll pray for you and we'll pray for you. And it's like, how did that happen? Because she was willing to be friendly and talk about anything. Dessert, whatever. What's my point? The point is, sometimes as a church, we're not very open and friendly and, and like, you know, when you see someone, if they're smiling, you'd be willing to go and speak to them. If they're not smiling, like, let me just go this way. And I think that that's, we need to, like, Jesus received the people. He received them. And this is, you know why receiving is important? You know why friendliness is important? You know why smiling is important? It's the beginning of Connecting with people. How are we supposed to save people? You know, with Mission Church, that's the mission. Save people. That's it. That's why you're here in this church. St. Barnabas, St. Suzanne. You're here because you want to be on a mission. The mission starts with connecting with people. How do you connect with people? Friendliness. Smile. Talk to them about their dessert. Talk to them about whatever. And that makes a connection with people this moment. It doesn't mean do what they do. It means connect with them as a friend, as a person, as a human. Christians can't be hidden. We have to be out there. If we're on a mission, we need to connect with people. Okay? Not be yoked with people. We know that in the Bible. But connect with them and be friendly. Okay? And by the way, what I'm telling you now is what I push myself to do in Zambia. And like I told you, I don't like to do. Some of you would say, okay, Buna, you, you have it easy to connect with people because you're wearing a galabaya and a cross and you look like a priest. But I want to tell you something, maybe I'll put it, maybe, maybe he doesn't, maybe, maybe it's more for me, but you know, wearing black is not always like a positive thing, you know? Like people say, you're Jewish. Yes, I'm Jewish. <laughs> no, I'm not Jewish. You're not, no, I'm not Muslim. What are you then? <laughs> And in Zambia, in Africa, there is even a, a connotation that wearing black means you're, you're involved in witchcraft. And I think that, so that's even harder. So it is not easier for me because I'm wearing black or I look like being a priest. But you know what does work is being kind. Just being kind. They'll forget about what you're wearing. They'll forget about what you look like. They just want people, people just want kindness. People just want someone to talk to. So when Jesus says he received them, we said it in a few words, but we didn't see how Jesus received them. I'm sure Jesus was like talking, hugging people, talking to people, and he was showing his love to people. That's how he received them. So if you're uncomfortable with doing that, it's okay. I am too. And many of us here are too. But that's our mission. Why? We want to receive people, connect with people, so we can save people. 
Okay, that's that's our mission. Okay. So the next thing he did after he received them, he did what? He spoke to them. Now, to be honest with you, maybe this is the hardest part because no one wants to speak about anything. But I can tell you, you can't do this one unless you did number one. Like, don't just jump in and say, "Hey, do you know Jesus?" Like, no, that's not going to work. You can't. You can't just jump in and say something like that randomly. You have to connect with people, and then, by the way, you can't escape. You have to speak to people about the kingdom of God. It has to be done. Like you can't. We can't just say that. No, I, 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 they saw in me my light is shining on them. <laughs> I'm happy for your light. And yes, I, I agree with you, and you're thinking to yourself, well, my example should be that. Yes, that's true. But you still have to speak to people what the kingdom of God. So once you have relationships with the world, you connect with people, then you can speak to them about the kingdom of God. And this can be done in a creative way. Now here's the thing that we're going we're gonna to be stuck on. If you yourself are not connected with God, what are you going to speak to people about? Think about it. You're in a mission church. By the way, what I'm telling you is what I think about myself all the time and to the people, the deacons and the servants we have in Zambia. I always think about these things. So what I'm sharing with you is not really about you. It's about what I'm going through. And I said, well, what invited me to come to a mission church here? So let me just share what I'm going through. So maybe it's helpful. Maybe it's not. You, you, you can push like the mute button if you want or you can listen. But I think the main thing here is that if we ourselves are not connected with God, what can we tell people about God? So, so at this point, when, it, when Jesus says, when it says he spoke to them about the kingdom of God, at this point there should be a question, I don't know God. I don't know him. What am I going to tell people about him? And this is the point where you can say, let me work on that. And that's okay. Like there's no shame in that. I know in my life I had many moments where I'm still growing and knowing about God. So what I'm saying is, if you don't know God, and you're not living a life for God, then it's hard to speak about God. Now that, that's, that, that will make you ask yourself a question. When you go back to work, or school, or your life, do you feel free to, are you living your life for God? Is your life for God? Is, is everything you do for Him? If yes, then it's easier now, like the guy in the airplane, to speak about God. Like the lady who was looking at my dessert, feel free to speak about God, because she's connected with God. Does that make sense? I hope that right. I hope you understand what I'm saying. What I'm saying really is, without our own experience and connection with God, I don't think we can speak to anyone. Now, if you are connected with God, let's continue now. So if you are not, that's another story, and that's okay, but that's something we need to work on. Okay? If you are connected with God, then you have the responsibility to speak about Him. And, and for everyone, there's no, uh, I'm not gifted in that, or I'm not sure, you know, even recently I was, I went to Greece on another plane, <laughs> and there was, like, I went there for, to follow St. Saint Foot, Saint Paul's footsteps and to visit Mount Athos. On the way, something crazy happened. My seat number is 18A, I remember the seat number, okay, very well, I don't know why I remember, but 18 a Another guy came in, and he showed me his ticket, he said, 18A, he said, hey, and it's my seat. He said, no, it's my seat. I said, okay, what are we going to do now? It's my seat or your seat. So, I decided to let him have a seat. Then I was joking with the flight attendant, I said, you, you might as well just move me up to a business class, you know, <laughs> because like, you know, you know, it's not working out here. And I was joking. And business class, class on this airline is like first class, by the way. Like, some business class are like, but this business class is like your own first class. I was joking, I said, you know, my 18A, 18A, you're stuck, I'm stuck. The guy looked, turned his head like that, and walked off. I said, okay, it didn't work. He comes, he comes back and he says, come here with me. Okay, I'm in trouble now. He says, sit here. He put me in business class. Okay, that's not the best part of it. It's still good. So, he put me there, and then he 
know what I'm saying? They're enjoying it. I'm sitting on the pillow and they give me a little box there and have like shaving cream. I don't know why I couldn't use it because <laughs> inside of it. And then there's like a whole bunch of stuff in there. And I said, this is nice. And I was enjoying it. I put my feet up and put laid back. All of a sudden I hear rumbling. They said, they said, the president's next to you. I said, who? The president, the first president of Zambia, Kenneth Kwonga, he's next to you. I said, oh, God, I'm going to So, I said, so I, I, I spent like the next 15, 20 minutes thinking to myself, should I talk to him? Should I leave him alone? Should I bother him? Should I say something about God to him? I, I, I don't know. So, <clears throat> after praying, and you know I don't like to talk to people, but now the president is there, there's got to be a reason. I'm sitting next to the first president of Zambia. So, anyways, I said, I turned to him after, because he's like, you know, the, there's like, in business class, they have those big things there that go up and down, so you can't see each other, so we moved it down, so, hey, how are you? And I started talking to him, and I said, <clears throat> can I get a picture with you? I couldn't think of anything else to say. <laughs> can I get a picture with you? And he said, sure. So, and there took a picture with him, and this, this guy, he has like an army of guys with him. And I said, I'm from the Coptic Church, you know. He's like not moving, he's not saying anything. <laughs> and I, I, I was trying, I said, I'm from the Coptic Church, or, you know, I'm in mission here, and I'm a priest, and, you know, nothing. <clears throat> so I kept I know, sweating, <laughs> nothing happening. But then I, I said, you know, we're praying for you, and Thank you for all you know, I started talking to him. Basically, long story short, I, I forced myself to make a conversation with him, even though he was looking at me like I was crazy and maybe he was afraid of me, I don't know, that I'm strange. But at the end of the day, at the end, he turned to me and he said, God bless you too, and thank you for talking to me. And I don't know if anything happened, but what I call it is dropping kingdom seeds. Okay? And I want us to learn that. It's okay, that's speaking to people about the kingdom of God. Maybe I didn't preach to him a long sermon. Maybe I didn't give him a long sermon. But you know, <clears throat> I was dropping some seeds, kingdom seeds. Now I remember that because you, you gotta find a way to get in there with people. <clears throat> I'm not very comfortable saying, Jesus died for your sins and repent now. I'm not very comfortable doing that. But I think if one thing leads to another, and you're smiling, and you're friendly, and you're talking to him, and you're talking... You know, if you share just about your life, you know, I'm going to a mission church, St. Barnabas, and St. Susanna, and you know, I'm one of the deacons, or I'm one of the servants, and we go, we set up today, and we do a lot of things, and we, and I really like one of you come. Like, if you're excited about your life, that opens a door. But if you're not excited about who you are and your life... So anyways, I got, I got to meet the president, and I drop some kingdom seeds, and I just encourage you not to miss your chance in your life to do the same. Remember, the first thing we have to do is receive people, welcome them, be friendly. And the next thing we have to speak to them, after you connect with people, we have to speak to them about the kingdom of God. And that's what our Lord did. He spoke to them about the kingdom. And you know, it doesn't have to be in a huge way in the beginning, but just to see. Of course, you know very well, I'm sure you, you talk about a lot of this church, the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Let me read you some verses just to kind of remind you what the Bible says about what I'm talking about. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20 says, Go, first word is, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. Amen. Go, and I'll be with you. That's it. Go and do what? Go, connect with people, receive people, and speak to them about the kingdom of God. Of course, you know Acts chapter 1, verse 8 very well. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, all the ends of the earth. Now, we always think that this is for somebody else. Go and make disciples is for somebody else. Go be witnesses is for somebody else. It's not true. Being a witness and going for his name is for everyone. Last verse I'll give you, and I'll continue the next part. 
Acts chapter 13, verse 4 and 5. Acts 13, 4 and 5. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. They went, the Holy Spirit was leading them, and they preached. They preached. Preached the word of God. Look, I, I, I don't want you to feel that this is not relevant to you. This is very relevant to you. It's very relevant to all of us. When we hear the Great Commission go, we say, oh yeah, Buddha David has to do that. And Buddha oh, David has, you know, he's going to do something. No, we, we have to do this. When it says the Holy Spirit, they received the Holy Spirit and they were witnesses. We need to be witnesses. When it says the Holy Spirit sent them down to, and they preached, we need to preach. We need to talk to you. We need to speak about the kingdom of God. So the first thing was what? They what? Received them and they spoke to them. What did Christ do next is what we, are, what we like to do, is He fed them. Now, here's the thing. This one is like the one we go to quickly. Right? Let's go feed the homeless. Even in Zambia, we have a hospital, which takes care of their physical needs. We have schools that help them with learning, education. And this is important, but it's number three. It's not number one. Doing mission projects and mission community service, very important, very good. And it's a way even to connect with people. But it's not the goal. It's a way. It's, we have to help people with their needs. And to be honest with you, it's not just the poor. We say, oh, we always go help the poor. There's so many types of poor, right, in this world. And there's so many people who are in need. And maybe you're one of them and I'm one of them. We're in need. Number three is you take care of people's needs. He fed them. That was their need. Maybe it's not your need. Maybe you're okay with me. Or maybe you're hungry right now. I don't know. But, but, but there's a need. You have a need. People in, 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 at work have a need. People at school have a need. People wherever have a need. So this one is the one that Christians like to do. Fill the gap. Stand up and say, okay, there's, let's pass out blankets. You know, when, you, when missionaries come to, to Africa, they want to pass out blankets and feed the people and where's the orphans? And it's like, are you going to share something in the Bible with them? No, but we have stuff to give them. We have stickers. It's good. Bring stickers. I like the stickers. <laughs> stickers are important. And things are important. But there's got to be more. Okay? We have sweets. Like, sweets is good. I like sweets. I have sweets. Sweets are good. But they can't be the end goal. First, Jesus received them. Welcome them, love them, was kind to them, was friendly. We have to be friendly. The world needs friendly people. Smile, talk to people. After you receive them, you can speak to them and drop kingdom seeds. Just seeds. It doesn't have to be a sermon. Just seeds about God. And then you discover their needs. When you have a relationship with people, you discover their needs. Help them with their needs. If someone needs a lift, drive them, take a car, use it. If there are needs out there, if they're rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Help them with their needs. And that's what Christ did. Here it happened to be no food, so he helped them. And we can do that. But that's not the goal. It could be a way to the goal. It could be a way to show love. I agree with all those things. But it's not the end goal. So this is a good model for us. As a mission church, we're all missionaries here in the room. How we can help people to know God. St. John Chrysostom said, If a Christian is unable to serve others and do mission to others, it is like the sun that is unable to give light. It becomes useless. If we can't do these things today, we are useless. I'm not trying to get you down at the end here, but my point is that there is a reason why we're coming to St. Barnabas and St. Susanna Church. It's not just because Abuna needs help to set up the thing and, and to fill seats. Abuna and the group, you guys are putting together a vision to save souls in Baltimore. And I think this is awesome. This is great. 
I feel blessed to come to be with you guys in the beginning stages. I know one day it's going to be even more amazing. But you guys have to ask yourself a question. What are we doing? What is our... And I know you guys are doing that already because Abuna told me some things last year when I came on what you guys were talking about. The strategies and things like that for the mission. But let's learn today from the Gospel. Let's learn from people who are bold, like the lady with the dessert, the guy on the plane. Let's learn from their way. It's a doorway into something more. He received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. Then he fed them. Some people put it in another way, and I'll tell you, and I'll finish on this note. Some people put it in three P's. I don't know if you guys like these acronyms, but someone once told me, Presence, proclamation, and provide. So those are the, the same three. Presence, you gotta make your self, your presence felt by learning the culture of people around you, building relationships. Some people do it through outreach dinners, coffee hours. So that's presence, P. Proclamation is now you have to proclaim what you know about God. And by the way, you don't have to, like I said, preach about something. You can preach about your experience with God. That's okay. That's actually probably more authentic than talking about something you don't know. Jesus did that. Did he do that for you? No, but he did that. It's better to tell people about what he's doing for you, so it's a proclamation. And provide. Provide their needs. The needs of people are. So you can remember in many different ways. Just a conclusion. He received them, spoke to them about the kingdom of God, then he fed them. Or, presence. Proclamation and provide. Either way, that's our mission. I'm praying for this church. We pray for the church in Africa, the church in Zambia, that we can continue to have courage to smile and connect with people and be a light to people and to drop kingdom seeds and to provide their needs. That's the mission. May God bless your mission in this church. I know that if I'm going to be right now here, I can't wait to see every year how things are going. May God bless Amona and bless all of you. And, and, and but remember, we have to connect with people in the world. We have to. We have to be friendly. We have to be, well, even if it's not their nature like me, it's okay. But that's the starting point on which we can speak to them about the kingdom of God and provide for their needs, help with their needs. So let's pray for one another. Glory be to God forever.